Hey everybody, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Coming at you today with a question that we got. Today, Jack was wondering how he can increase or decrease his inventory on his inventory sheet by using his main sheet here. And he has some of my courses, but he's kind of in a rush because the, the boss wants it done now. So this is a relatively simple request. Basically, we have a drop down here. We have brown sugar, butter, a few other things like this. These are just demos. This is dummy data, not his actual inventory. All right, but each of those has a VLOOKUP that brings the amount that's found in storage, and that is directly from right over here. So the brown sugar has a VLOOKUP to column two of his little table here, and and that brings back the number three. If he had clicked on flour, it would have returned the number twenty. Very simple VLOOKUP right here. We have other videos to show you how to do that. But essentially what we want to do is whenever we click add, we want to take the number of drums or the number of trolleys. These are different inventory storage amounts. And the number three is actually coming just from the count of the number of drums. So we don't really need to worry about the VLOOKUP right now. I think what we need to do is, let's say we wanted to add one drum and we wanted to say we're adding two trolleys at the same time. What we would do is on the other sheet, we'd find brown sugar, the row that contains that, and we would take whatever number's in the column for drums, let's say it was 20, and add one to it. And if the number of trolleys was zero, we would add two to that, so it would be 21 and two total. All right, that should be relatively simple. The main steps that we're gonna go through is how to find the last row, which we have you know, we do in a lot of our videos. It's essentially the same thing as going to the very bottom of this row here, which I did with control down arrow, and then I'm gonna hit control up arrow bow. And that gives us the last available row, which will tell us the number 11, okay? And then we'll know to loop from two all the way to 11, not to a million, just to 11, the last row. And only we'll stop whenever we find the number or the term, in this case, flour, brown sugar, we'll stop and we'll analyze this one and this one if we had brown sugar and we'll increase or decrease as we need. So uh, that's really all we have to do. Let's hit Alt F11. So he's already got some macros in here. Again, I've, I've told him to eventually clean this up because you don't really need to select a sheet or select a specific cell in order to clear the contents. That's usually like a macro recorder type of thing. Uh, but as you become more and more proficient and efficient with VBA, you'll find that you can actually just say sheets main uh, dot range D8 dot clear contents or equals blank uh, double quote double quote. And you can actually clear it out no matter what sheet you have selected. So uh, you can do it in one line of code and you don't have to worry about the screen flashing and looking kind of uh, wonky like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and create, let's just create a clean module here. He's got a few modules going on. We're going to create a sub and we'll just call it test because I don't really care what it's called for right now. Now the main thing that I want to do is I want to go, I'm going to, the code's going to be in the inventory sheet. So I don't really care about this sheet except for I need to know it's the cell right here. It's called B6 or I could give it a named, uh, a named range. But B6 is fine as long as we're not going to change the location of this, it should be fine. If we were going to change the location of this cell a lot, adding rows or columns here and there, then you'd want to name it so it would be a constant. So we'll say main is the sheet and cell B6 is where we're going to get this brown sugar or whatever the product is. So Alt F11. Let's go ahead and get the product and just trap it into a variable for fun. So our current prod is going to be equal to uh, the main sheet. Now I can use the sheet code name, which I like to do, and or you could use the name, which is main. The code name is sheet one, as you can see right here. So I'm gonna refer to it as the sheet one dot, and that way I can immediately uh, move on with my code. So sheet one dot range, and the range is cell B6. Okay, so that's going to capture the product. Let's go ahead and test that really quick. I'm going to hit F8. If you're on a Mac, it's Command Shift I. So C prod is equal to brown sugar. If you can hover, you can see that. All right, so we have the product. Now we have to create a loop in the other sheet. That's going to be in the inventory sheet. Let's see, that is called sheet two for the inventory. So we're going to loop on sheet two. Let's take a peek at it so we can see what we're dealing with. We need to get the last row. 
in order to have a dynamic loop. If we were only ever going to have 11 entries, we could just say it's going to be from 2 to 11 forever. But in this case, we want to make it dynamic. So we're going to make it 2 to whatever the last row variable happens to be. So let's see, what is the last row going to be? Last row is going to be equal to sheet number 2 dot cells. And we cover this a lot, so I'm not going to go over this too awful much. So we're going to get the rows dot count that gets us the last row. In this case, it's not column A, it's column B or 2. So let's see, <clears throat> the last row in column 2 dot end, that's the control up method right there and then we got to get the row not the actual value of the cell that we landed on right here we want the row row 11 in this case and now we can take that and create our actual for next loop so we're going to say for i is going to be equal to 2 all the way to whatever our last row happens to be in this case it's going to loop from 2 to 11 because that's our last row and we're going to say next i up arrow, up arrow, and tab. We're going to start indenting anything inside our loop. So we're going to search for whatever the current product is in the loop, and it's going to be in column B again, column 2. So I'm going to say an if-then statement to compare, like is the current item, the current row that we're on, is that thing the word brown sugar? So let's say if sheet 2 dot cells, and we're going to use row I, because that's the current row of the loop that we're going to be on during our iterations. Is that in column what? Yeah, column B or column 2. Now you can use B if you put it in quotes, but I'm going to say column 2 because I know I'm used to that. It's fine. If this current cell here in our loop is equal to, and I'm not going to say uh, uh, brown sugar or something like that. Let's make it dynamic with C prod. That is the variable that we trapped earlier just so we can type in shorthand and less keystrokes. So if the current row on column 2 of that sheet is equal to the product, then that means we found it. So we'll say then, and we need to complete our end if at the end so we don't have a syntax error, up arrow and tab. All right, so if we found it, if the sheet on the, uh, if the looped row is equal to the product, then we're going to say we found it, oops, found it, a little comment there. And now we can update the inventory. So the inventory is found on column C and on column D right here. In fact, let me zoom in just a little bit here so we can see it a little bit better. Alt F11. So what we're going to do is, once we found it, we're going to update the inventories. So we'll be able to use uh, this line of, uh, this kind of part of the code right here because it already has a current row. And it's just, we're going to use a different column to update that. And in fact, we need to get the other cells. We don't just need the product. We also need the number of drums and the number of trolleys. That's in D6 and E6. So we might as well write out some variables for that and start over. Uh, it should be pretty easy. So I'm going to say the current number of drums uh, is equal to sheet 1 dot range. In this case, D6. And I'll just copy and paste that and tweak a little bit. So the, the number of trolleys, C trolleys. Current number of trolleys is found in E6. And let's actually just start it over right there. So the product is brown sugar. The number of drums we're increasing or decreasing is 1. And the number of trolleys is 2. The last row is this. And so we're starting our loop from uh, 2 all the way to 11. And I is going to be 2 at the very beginning of that loop. Now we'll take a look at values on sheet 2. If I hover over this, the current row is I, right? So that is number 2. So row 2 in column B right now is flour. Is that equal to C prod? Is flour equal to brown sugar? No. So then we'll do the next row, the next I. Now we're on row 3. So is that, is sugar equal to that? No, it is not. Is this one, aha. Now we're on row four of the other sheet. Brown sugar is equal to the current product, brown sugar. Great, we found it. So what do we do with it? Well, we're going to take whatever's in, let's take a look over here. We're going to take whatever's in column two um, of the current row that we found. We found uh, row four, and let's look at column three or column C, and we're going to take that, whatever's in that, and increase it by whatever the number of new 
drums that we're adding. So let's try this. So we're going to say sheet two dot cells still on row I. We already found the current row, so that's perfect, row I. Uh, but we're going to take column three, and we're going to make that equal to itself plus or minus. In this case, we're going to do the add button. So we're going to say plus. So let's copy this. It's going to be equal to itself plus whatever our number of current number of drums that we're adding so plus C drums so what this means is 3 is now going to be equal to 3 plus 1 so this cell right here is now going to be equal to itself plus 1 so guess what 3 is going to be equal to 3 plus 1 3 is going to be 4 let's try it so we can see that in the background here as I hit F8 it just became 4 and we're going to actually do the same thing to the trolleys. Let's copy and paste this successful line of code and tweak it just a little bit. Now in column four of that row that we found is going to be equal to that column four cell plus the number of C trolleys. And you guessed it, that should increment that as well. So right now there's nothing in there. It's considered a zero for Excel. Zero is going to be equal to zero plus the number of trolleys is two so that means it's going to say two in the cell let's hit f8 and see if that works aha perfect and then since we're not going to keep looking for any other instances of the same word we could actually exit the sub that means that it's not going to keep looping uh, pretending like we have a hundred thousand rows to loop through it would be very inefficient to keep looping when we already found the result so that's why we want to exit the loop or in this case exit the entire sub early so we found it we increase this uh, it's now four this is now two and then the next line of code should just exit the sub so if I hit F8 it just stops it dead in its tracks which is much more efficient all right, the same thing could be done if you wanted to add. So instead of calling this test, we'll call this add INV, and we'll make another one that's called subtract INV. Now, the most efficient way to do this would actually be to add a parameter so that you could say, you know, add or subtract, or you could have it Boolean where it's true or false, one meaning you're going to subtract, and one meaning you're going to add, and then you could just make this a variable or, uh, or just tell it you wanted to if then if if this is true then subtract uh, if it's false then add or something but for simplicity's sake for right now let's go ahead and just copy this paste it and we'll call one of them add and one of them subtract inventory and that way all we have to do is keep everything the same except for this is going to be minus the number of drums or minus the number of trolleys so that way the subtract button will take that away and the uh, add button will add it. That's literally all we have to do. Everything else is the same. So we're going to right click and assign a macro to the add button. Uh, only this workbook because we just need the add inventory. And for the subtract button, we're going to assign a macro and we're going to say subtract inventory. Now we should just go ahead and test it. So right now, uh, let's see. I'm going to clear these really quick. So brown sugar, let's do something different. So let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. here's flour okay so flour has 20 in it let's add 1 and 0 to the trolleys and uh, we can take a peek by the way so flour is the top one is 2 or excuse me 20 and 2 respectively so it should be 21 whenever I click the add button okay and now it's 21 and the number of trolleys did not change at all there's still 2 now let's say I added, let's make it simple numbers, 10 and 10. So this should be 21 and 12, excuse me, 31 and 12. So if I hit add, it says 31 and 12. Great, it found it, so it added. Let's also subtract 15 and, ooh, 15, that'll put it in the negative. I don't care, I want to try it, I'm testing it. So let's take away that. So this is right, and this should be negative. Yes, negative 3, which you can't have, so you might want to put an if-then statement in saying, hey, uh, we don't have enough inventory for that or whatever. But essentially, that's all you have to do to look up something and then affect the current row. So Coco is 37. Let's add two drums. And uh, it should say 39. And it does. So that's, I believe that's all that Jack wanted. So we'll go ahead and save our progress. 
And if you want to try this out, you can download that. It's very simple. So we'll have a copy of that for you in the link description. All right, if you haven't joined our Excel Ninjas free Facebook group, it's great for getting your questions answered really quickly. It's a great community. We have exclusive content there, and we're adding our live Q&A uh, sessions and a lot of really good stuff, a lot of great people in there growing daily. So we hope to see you there as well. Don't forget to click that like button if you enjoyed this session, and please subscribe to our channel for more great content. All right, thanks for watching and God bless.